Ilya Repin is one of the most famous Russian artists who was born in the 19th century, at a time when serfdom had not yet been abolished in the country. He lived through both Russian revolutions and died in the early 20th century in Finland. He was one of the key figures of Russian realism in art. The key aim of this artistic direction is to capture reality in most precise and unbiased form. Mm -hmm. As an example, you can pay attention to the painting Bruloki on the Volga River, which brought all Russian fame to Ilya Repin. The painting depicts exhausted people pulling a laden vessel floating on the Volga River. Not surprisingly, this painting became a subject of criticism for some officials of that time in Russia. Дорогие гости, начинаем экскурсию по дому музея великого русского художника Ильи Ефимовича Репина. В прихожей вы видите вещи Репина. Суконную накидку с капюшоном, берет, у зеркала его саквояж, шляпа, в углу трости и лопаты, которые он любил работать в сосуде. For this reason, the Soviets later often used Ilya Repin's paintings as propaganda to illustrate the ineffectiveness of the former Tsarist political system. Although I'm sure that if Ilya Repin had lived in Soviet Russia, he would also have depicted many scenes of Soviet society, for which he might have been sent to prison camp. We are now in the village of Repin, a former Finnish settlement that was called Kvokkala. Here, in 1899, Ilya Repin and his second wife, Natalia Nordman, bought a small estate. Natalia Nordman was also an extraordinary person. She was a feminist, a fighter for the rights of peasants, but she also tried to fight the problem of the world hunger. All these ideas and aspirations were nonsense for women of those times in Russia. She tried to simplify the process of food production, experimenting with the use of various meadow herbs and even hay in the preparation of various dishes. It is not surprising that many people of that era were only annoyed by her. Natalia Nordman even published a special cookbook for starving people, which was published in 1911 and caused on ridicule in the press. But it is ironic that seven years later, when the country underwent a revolution that led to total starvation, the recipes from this cookbook became very popular. In 1918, recipes for potato husk cutlets and beet coffee became particularly relevant. Natalia Nordman was an advocate for human freedom and equality and strongly opposite the use of servants' labor. To minimize the labor of servants, the state boasted a rotating dining table with drawers for used dishes. This made it possible to no longer require the service of servants. Natalia Nordman has more than halved the number of meals prepared on the estate, which has reduced the cook's work time from 17 hours to 8 hours a day. For many guests visiting Ilya Repin, this was weird. Natalia Nordman died in 1914, and after the collapse of the Russian Empire in 1917, Ilya Repin and his estate ended up in another country. What color where Ilya Repin's estate was located became part of Finland. In 1939, Kvokkala, later known as Repina, became part of the Soviet Union again. The nature around the village of Repina is very picturesque. It's not surprising that Ilya Repin chose these places to build his house which was his creative studio. Here, secluded from people in the pine forests on the shore of the Gulf of Finland, he could quietly engage in creative work.
Бах! 